Okay, today we're going to talk about what we're going to do is build an RF modulator from RFU adapter. If you know what RFU is, it stands for radio frequency unit. comes with video game systems like Sega Genesis, Sega Dreamcast, PlayStation, any of those. And they all do the same thing as what an RF modulator does. It will, it will make an RF signal from composite video and audio. Even though the video cube can connect to have like R or the red, green, and blue signals, it doesn't use them. Usually it won't because it takes more circuitry to do that because TV signals, RF on TV signals is like, is, is kind of like having the composite video and audio signals on different frequencies going through it. Anyway, we should talk about the differences between RFU adapter and RF modulator. RFU adapter has no power supply unit built in, where if you buy an RF modulator, it does. Now, another thing with RFU adapters, it doesn't have the RCA jacks, it only has one for the video game system, where RF modulator has RCA jacks. You know, the yellow, white, red connectors, they're not on an RFU adapter, it has a it has like a it only has has like has like a video game connector which which one we're going to use today is we use a Sega Dreamcast it doesn't matter which one you choose cuz they all most likely all going to do the same kind of thing you just got to choice the wire so you should have an ohm meter if you're going to do this you should have an ohm meter because you don't have ohm meter, you're not going to be able to figure out which wire goes where, and, you, and it's not, not, not recommended to do it without an ohm meter. You, you could, of course, of course, of course, build a continuity tester. You can get a cheap continuity tester that checks continuity. You can find it at Walmart and stuff like that. It's a lot cheaper than buying a meter. It'll do, do just do, do, the, do the quick job for it. But we're going to do it on a meter. Anyway, we're going to talk about, now another thing I should tell you about is power supply. Power supply is like, 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 like the one I'm using is a cheap cell phone charger, it needs 5 volts, the USB one we use. We're going to put a capacitor on it, a bigger capacitor, so, so, so just to be safe to filter out any extra noise that the power supply doesn't fill or filter out because it might be still be noisy even though it's filtered. That's why I'm going to put a bigger capacitor on it to make it even better. We'll put a 2200 microfarad capacitor on it, 25 volt, doesn't matter what voltage is, it's just 5 volts. Now what we're going to do is talk about the design. we we'll say we have our have our box here, this is our RFU adapter. This here will be plus five volts. This will go to go to to the USB charger. There'll be a box here. There'll be a, another thing here. A capacitor in front of it. And this here. Goes to another box. This is our PSU power supply unit that provides out the five volts. And this here goes ground. This ground here is common is is ground for 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 the power supply and for the signals. Here we'll have. Composite video, we we'll put CV for composite video, and then put here for A for audio. Then we have our DVD player. This is the whole idea I build it because I'm gonna, we're gonna use it on the DVD player since someone broke the TV on purpose. I'm not gonna say who. And then, and, and then, uh, and then, and then, then when they got replaced, they got an older one which doesn't work with it. So we need to put an, an RF modulator on it, and that's what we're going to build it for. It's a DVD player. 
This goes to audio. This goes to composite video. So it goes there. There's also one more thing that comes out here. This is our TV out. Hi, what are you doing? Just come and check you out. See what you're doing. What are you building? Oh, this is RF modulator. Huh. Anyway, with this, we have to make sure we split it because even though it has has antenna, extra antenna connect on it, it's going to leak RF. I tried it before and I noticed it will the signal will not come in clear when it's off. So we'll put a switch in between. It's a switch between. We'll put a switch here to switch between TV, TV, ANT, and actually this, this here, this here is your N1, N2, this will go to the TV. Okay. And this here allows you to switch between the two things. From this thing and that thing, you know, so you can have it change channels because it will leak RF. I did, I did it before. I did this before, and it, and I decided to try out the antenna cut to see how well it will come in, and it didn't come in good at all. The picture is fuzzy and bouncy, but we can. It only does that only on the TV signals you try to send into the cable, and from it could be from cable antennas, it will be bouncy if you do it through the one on the RF modulator. On RF adapter, I mean, because it leaks through these cords you put in on the power supply, and it, and to prevent it from doing that, we'll put a switch on it so it has its own connector, a separate connector, so it doesn't go through the RF adapter. It'll go through the switch, and you can switch between turn the switch to turn. Turn the TV off and go to DVD mode, or you can go to the regular TV. Now, what you could do, there's also another option for the filtering. There's the common mode, mode choke you can get for it, and you can put a pass on both sides of the choke, and, and, and it'll filter it out better. But since, I'll be able to have an experiment with that later on. Well, with that the experiment with, with our common mode chokes video, it'll be coming soon because I'm getting that part from all electronics from my for Christmas. And that's pretty much it for it now. Yeah, this, will, this will put on channel 3 or 4. Which is spectrum analyzer is nice to uh, to have with it, but since I don't have a spectrum analyzer, when we get done with it, we're gonna met, we're gonna hook it up to an RF probe. I'm making RF probe out of it. I have the diode and capacitors on on uh, let's say uh, On that playground, electronic playground comes with them. We'll try it on that and see how it does. Okay, now let's go take a look at the. Uh, let's go take a look at the. Uh, building it up. Okay, for the power supply, we're gonna you wanna use this. Uh, the, the this power this. USB charger. We're gonna do is to save the end on it, but we're gonna cut the cord in the middle, cut it in half. We'll save the this end. We we'll use it for something else, maybe a charger or something like that. And cut this right there. Cut it off. I think we could strip it with this. Yeah. There you go. There's your. There's a red and white wire. Red must be positive and white must be negative. We should check that for me, but it's probably going to become be, be the same thing. To double check. You double check just to make sure that these are the correct polarity. Otherwise, you hook that capacitor up to it, 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 it could explode or leak.
won't explode because the patch I'm putting on it has a vent on it. It'll, it'll just burst, burst open the vent and then it will leak out. This wired backwards. Okay, let's do that. So, see right here we have this capacitor now mounted on there. This capacitor will take out take out any of the this will help filter out the 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 whipple and hum you might get if you plug this in into the wall because it because it has because it'll have some whipple and it'll have some hum and it might not be good this thing might not be filtered out the best it might be cheap since it was cheaply made since it's a cheaply made wall wart because it's like like I said a cell cell foot on Walmart like one dollar and so many cents I think it was thirty four cents or so one dollar and thirty four cents but Anyway, it, it probably didn't have bigger filtering on it, so I had to make it better by putting a, put a bigger capacitor on the end of it. Okay, now the capacitor it, it can be anything 470 or, or bigger. Don't want to go too big, like one farad, otherwise you'll draw too much current on your power supply. Just anything anything 470. Microfarads are bigger will, will work. This is a 2200 microfarad. The bigger the better. Bigger capacitance, better it will filter. Okay? Now, another thing I should tell you about the power supplies. I, I, made, I made this one before. I buy the same RFU adapter I did before. And I know it runs up 5 volts. Now, don't buy a power supply yet, power adapter. If you don't know what voltage it has, unless checking with the pin out and there's only like one voltage supplied by it, or 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 if you're sure that 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 you know don't know what the 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 voltage is, don't buy it until you until you get a power to to to, to take it apart and and look through the pin out, see what pins it used. That's what I what I recommend doing. Okay. RF modulator, RFU adapter. We gotta do is you gotta cut the end off. Make sure you cut it at a length where you can, we still get the wires on this end because you'll need to do because you'll need to access the pins with your multimeter. We'll show you how to get to the pins on it. You can take your pliers and pry the, the connector open so you easy access to the pins. Let's do that. I'm gonna cut like here to she give us good enough length. These scissors do it. Okay. Then we have to strip this back. Careful not breaking any of the wires off. I don't think I can get it with, I don't think the wire strips can strip it, strip this black thing off the cord. So I have to use this. Be careful not to break in the wires. See if we got, we should have four wires. In all. Let's put the one right there. Get this other side. Here we go. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Good. We don't really get rid of any of the wires. There's a black, yellow, white, and orange. 
No other colors. Make sure there ain't no other colors. It doesn't look like it. Okay. Now for the connector, we're gonna take our needle nose pliers and pry it open. Pry it open like this. See, this bends it right over. See, easy access to the pins. You'll need to get access to them because you need to measure a multimeter. I think the first one is a composite video, which is the easiest one. It's all right over here, or nothing else is right by it. Of course, that's where the composite is. And that's pin 13 on here. So, first, I'm gonna take my multimeter here, put it on the continuity setting. And if I touch these two, these two cloud clips together, you hear a buzzing noise. Now, I might try and pry these pins up. Carefully. Hang on, I'll go get the audio probes. Okay, first we're gonna touch, we're gonna strip all these wires first, see the more stripped. So we have a way of probing them. What we'll do is we'll pull them, figure out where that wire, what color wire is on that pin, wipe it down, then do another wire. Wipe it down on this list. Just nice to print out the pin out so you can have, like I did, so you can have easy, easy finding the pins and stuff. Try white. The white wire first. This has a little fuzz in it, but it's not going to be an issue. There's a little bit of fuzz, but it's not that bad. It's like still wearing our wires though, we still keep easy solder. Positive fold, we put the, that one there. Yellow, white wire. We're doing yellow, white. We're doing white one first. Let me see what pin that is. If I can get this here without undoing the wire. What pin makes it beep. Pin five. And that's five volts. Okay, we'll write that down. Pin five is E white. So we find that pencil I had. Pin five. White. Now we'll go to our power supply. Now let's do another pin. Let's do yellow this time. Some probes on there. Grab the other probe. This one is left and white. Yellow is left and white. So I put yellow on both of them. Since I know this is a, a mono RF view adapter, it doesn't, it doesn't have stereo. It takes the two channels left and white and ties them together. So this is yellow. OK. 
pay. That's that's two. Two more left to go. Let's try the black wire. Okay, black. Oof, the wire come off and the pull that uh, put back on there. You can use a continuity test though, you can use that. Instead of a meter, it's cheap, might be cheaper to use a continuity test though, if you're gonna make this. And you don't wanna spend money on a meter, but you can just use a meter. Black is brown. Okay? So I'll put black and brown. One wire left to go. Now it's composite video and it's still orange. Since that's, since that's one, two, three, four, and four is composite video. So that's orange. Okay. Now I'm going to solder it up and I'll show you how it looks after you're done soldering it. Okay, first things first, we're going to make, we're for testing it, we're going to test the voltage on the, the, uh, on, on, on the coax out, the TV out, and you see there's no voltage no matter, AC or DC. That's a good sign. That means that 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 we didn't that none of the voters are gonna enter the TV and mess things up. The next thing to do is measure up our RF coil and see if we got voltage there. I'm gonna do that. We did this first to make sure that the voltage isn't isn't because of those voltage on that connector there, and making sure that it's just RF. Now to do that, what we're gonna do is take this out of the computer I have over here. Clip it to the center. Get on it tight enough. Then I'm gonna take the wet pull, put it on the cathode of this diode, or the germanium diode. Black goes on the anode, red goes the cathode. Okay, then we hook this to here, and we get a volt. Get 120.6 milli volts. And if I disconnect that, get nothing. Connect it back up. Get 100 and around. Get to get some voltage there. When to hook it, get almost after nothing on this 1.5 millivolt, but that's just because it's picking up RF from the wires. That's the RF from the wires that one millivolt is, or three. But if I hook it up to the coax output, you see it goes up a lot. It goes up to seven. See, now it's up to 81.4. So we got RF coming out of it. I think, I think this is a good to go one. Let's go try it out. Okay, I hooked it up and it seems to be working fine. Let's see what happens with the see if there's any sound. There should be sound. Oops. Now I did it. That is sound. Okay. Sound's working. I thought it would because if it this works, it should have sound because I've connected correctly. So 
So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it.